Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today I'm going to be reviewing the latest offering from Salesforce Labs to hit the App Exchange, the Einstein Analytics Learning Adventure. So Salesforce Labs is an outlet on the App Exchange where Salesforce employees are able to put up great content, really awesome managed packages. They do go through the same review process as everything else on the App Exchange, but I do need to call out the caveat that it is not officially supported content, but that does not mean that it is not awesome. It just means that technically if a new release comes out and the apps that you have from this uh, content provider break, uh, Salesforce will is not officially responsible for that. That said, this is about as close to official as you can get. And I've used a ton of different things from Salesforce Labs in the past. I've never had a problem. And the content is always top notch, really well thought out, elegant, simple, great stuff. Thank you guys for putting all this stuff up here. And uh, this, this newest offering is by no means any exception to that. One thing to call out when installing this. Um, if you do not have enable analytics templates enabled, you will get an error and it will block the installation. This is not a flaw in the design of the app. This is just the nature of the fact that this box is not checked by default. And if you want the app, you're going to have to check the, uh, check the box. The click path for that is going to be set up analytics settings and then enable analytics templates. So if you take a quick look at this, uh, it's just like anything else. If you just go hit create apps, um, once you have the package installed, you're going to see the, uh, the option in your list of templates. And you're going to hit continue. You're going to name it. And then you get to see this uh, wonderful animation of um, Astro dancing through the woods. And you'll see all the different checkboxes popping up, uh, new Winter 18 feature. We get to actually see the progress. Um, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, there's just, I believe they're they're pulling in like an external data set. It's, it's basically um, some generic simplified um, Opti data. So um, there's also some uh, image files that are associated with it that gets dropped into the uh, Salesforce files. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward. There's not really a whole, whole lot going on here in the sense of, you know, there's no complex data flow. There's no wizard to walk through. It's really, really pretty simple. The whole thing takes uh, only a couple of minutes to spin up. I'm not going to wait for the whole thing to go because I already have it installed. So I'm going to go to the app itself and I'm going to hit run app. This is going to take me to the adventure homepage and I'm going to switch to presentation mode because I like it that way. And the app is really divided into two main sections. One is choosing the right chart and one is building dynamic apps. And frankly, if you want to look at choosing the right chart and, and just how to build out your dashboards in general, this tool is great. Uh, Everything is really clean, um, really great uh, imagery, a very just, just clean product overall. Uh, so you're going to want to click on the titles themselves. That is the actual link widget. Everything is actually built in uh, Einstein Analytics, which is another really nice, uh, it's very meta, using uh, Einstein to build a tool to teach you about Einstein. I really enjoy that. Uh, so the link, the link widget itself is actually the title. So you want to click on that right there. So besides the intro page, there's seven different dashboards in this section that are going to talk about um, helping to identify the right chart for the job. So, you know, yeah, we've got the workhorse, the basic bar chart, you know, but when you get bored of that, you got a couple of other different visualization types that really do the exact same thing, but just provide some variety to the look. Um, you know, and there's different use cases where one or the other might actually be, um, you know, a better, a better match to the, the kind of data that you're going to provide. Um, trending, this is also pretty cool. I like that little animation on load there. This is nice. We got the different examples of like our reference lines that we can add, predictive line. Um, one thing to call out here, I don't know if this was an omission, but in all cases, so we're looking at how to project um, multiple, um, multiple values onto the same line. And uh, one thing to call out is that selected revenue and average is the same amount. So maybe I'm doing it wrong. Another cool one to, uh, yep, I do like the difference between two measures and three measures. Um, this this is is one of I have a real um, love hate relationship with the uh, with this visualization because on the one hand it's so powerful and on the other hand in certain situations it looks like somebody just did a cannonball into the ball pit. 
Another thing I wanted to point out is that each one of these dashboards has a section dive deeper, make it dynamic, and this is going to link you over to section two and the correct tutorial that's going to be associated with bindings um, that, that, that you can use for this. So then next one, um, it also calls out good use case valid reasons for why you don't want um, – you don't want to use certain visualizations and and this basically says well you know the the the, the donut chart is really only useful if you're going to have 20 groupings or fewer um, and I would even go less on that it gets very cluttered very quickly um, and then yeah we have pie charts now I really thought that I was I was both I'm always happy when new features come out but when they added the ability to change the internal diameter I think it was like two maybe two three releases ago um, I, I, I was happy that we're giving our clients what they want, but at the same time, I felt like we gave up the fight. You know, oh, you want a pie chart? Well, we don't have a pie chart. We have a donut chart. It contains the same information. It's basically a bar chart where the bars are stitched end to end, or it's a pie chart where someone cut out the middle. Take your pick. What was wrong with it? Nothing. But great feature, has absolutely nothing to do with this review. More to the point, what this is telling you is, again, don't use donuts or pie charts. If you have more than 20 groupings, you're just going to end up with something really ugly that's not insightful. Again, we got the Teach Me How link down there. So it goes on. They've got all kinds of stuff here, like different visualizations, um, this one, metrics. They didn't call out the number widget. I don't really blame them. Number widgets are boring. I use them constantly, and it's just like, you know, I could have done this with Excel, um, the location one, um, and I'm actually going to show something fun with this in a minute. Location one talks about uh, changing your different uh, map types, and I don't blame them for not including it, but it would have been really, really cool to see an example of a custom map or even call out the fact that custom maps are available. But this is really more of a beginner's focus, and um, you know, custom maps are, are, are a fairly advanced um piece of work if you don't just download a pre-existing one and even then um but there is by the way i will call out there's an excellent trails for or a trailhead for um, building custom maps and you should definitely check it out um so another thing i wanted to call out is man if they didn't pick the wrong projection on this one and i don't think they really have a choice and i'll show you exactly why and this is not um this is again i'm not calling out the app for this this is just something i observed about um the uh, different map types. So I noticed, um, I'm not 100% positive when it came out, but has anybody else noticed that now with map type, you also get projection type? Really don't know what release uh, that came around in. We do see that the map type is coming from, uh, from this binding, static underscore one. But my personal uh, preference would have been to have, I think it's the, the Albers USA projection is the one I usually like. But here's what happens if you attempt to apply that on uh, a world map. So again, it has nothing to do with this this app. This is just a weird little fun Salesforce anomaly I found while I was playing around with this. I just can't say enough about this. It's filling a really, really crucial void between like Trailhead and like the SACL bindings guide, which, you know, is my Bible. But if you know anything about Bibles, you know that it's only in the last few major revisions that they stop being in Latin. And the SACL binding guide is just a really hard read. Um, you know, even like for someone like me who has like studied it like cover to cover or top to bottom because it's PDF, uh, it, there's, there's a huge, huge, huge gap between where trailheads leave off and where documents like that begin. And content like this is exactly what the community needs in order for people to be able to get up on their feet and teach themselves how to use this stuff. So the other branch of this app is the Build Dynamic Apps section. And this is where we get into the real meat and potatoes stuff here. A very common piece of feedback that I get on, uh, especially my Bindings Basics tutorial series, is that um, I, I don't really post the code for it. Um, I mean, you can always hit me up on the community and ask and I'll post it, but it, YouTube's not really a good medium for uh, posting large volumes of code. And, uh, you know, eventually I'm probably going to, you know, put it up somewhere on a repository that's, you know, free and everybody can get to it. But uh, they, they, they do it all for you right here. Um, each one of these uh, different dashboards that they have uh, has a, a, a good exercise in how to do some basic binding functionality 
They explain everything in really rich detail. Um, it's fun. You can walk through all the exercises. Um, I haven't thoroughly torture tested any of these, but at a glance, this is solid code. This is good stuff. They're not going to steer you wrong. Um, realistic uh, real world examples that you're going to encounter, like odds are your chart is going to be called chart one. Um, there's a pretty good chance that that's, that's what it's going to be named. And on the different, uh, you can even see the different uh, chart types and what you're going to have to put in your static steps to get that. Um, they've got one for reference lines. Everybody loves dynamic reference lines. See also my video on dynamic reference lines. Uh, conditional formatting, everybody's favorite thing in the world. Um, I remember trying to figure out ways to hack the system and do this back in the classic de designer in spring 16. And uh, I technically uh, do have functioning examples of uh, dynamic colored measures, but they are so ugly and uh, only in the harshest technical sense do they actually work. I'm recording this after the fact, but I actually did manage to dig up the old dev org that I had this in. So it's actually a dynamic text, not dynamic measure. And uh, as we change the value, the text string and the color do change. This is built on the classic designer. And uh, it's actually at its core, it's an XMD hack. A little bit of SAC will involve, but we're just uh, manipulating XMDs and projecting all the measures because of white box tricks and the kind of weird uh, hacky UI stuff that we could do with the original designer. Um, but this is this is such a common, common, common need. And you do have to actually have some SACL to do this. This is possibly one of the most common basic use cases where you cannot achieve it without SACL and everybody really, really, really wants it. So great to see this up here. Um, then also about uh, passing bindings not into uh, chart parameters, but into um, actual steps and queries themselves. Really cool stuff, you know, dynamic measures, dynamic grouping, dynamic limit, dynamic order. Uh, one thing that's not called out here is reverse alphabetical. Um, I forget what the syntax is for that off the top of my head. Something about a minus one, I think something like that. Uh, but it is, it is, it is something that's available. This doesn't need to be exhaustive. This is a, this is for one thing. This is a, a version one, and for another thing, this is meant to teach you concepts, so that when you go and read the SACL bindings guide, more of it will actually make sense because you'll have had some time to actually practice and do this stuff on your own, and it won't be just completely Latin. You will have some basic fundamental understanding of what you're going into. So every one of these dashboards keeps telling me that I should hit uh, control E and I, I can't really help myself. I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, control E, oh, there's plenty of code. Hey, how, how did you guys do it? Yeah, when in doubt, just look, they're telling you to check out all the examples of all the different stuff. Like, oh, you know, there's, there's how their text widgets are all built. Oh, and what's really cool is when you find the text widgets that that actually have the bindings and, and the code in them. You can see like all the different line breaks that the system has to insert to be able to like make nice uh, looking code happen in a text box. They put a lot of love into this thing. Another really cool thing, again, you know, this is this is kind of, um, uh, it's, it's, it's really meta because you can rip these dashboards apart and see what good solid design looks like. So they've got a series of uh, link widgets here on the right hand column next to image widgets. Now you can actually put um, like a link widget in a container that has a background image on it and don't put any text on the link widget and it'll still work. Um, but it you end up with like weird stretching and it doesn't always work that, that well. Um, I can zoom in or zoom out on this all I want and those icons are staying nice and tight there. Um, that's, that, that's really good. Great clean work. Um, again, all of this is, uh, is hanging out in, um, in files, um, so that's where you're going to be able to uh, access like, images like this if you wanted to um, you know, like, uh, actually just uh, reuse their icons, which I don't know if it's necessarily fair, so don't take that as a suggestion. That's probably a bad idea in copyrighted material. It's just this is exactly what people need to take things one step further, and uh, it's, it's awesome to see it. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, future revisions are going to include. Um, if I had to guess, I would say that they're, they're probably looking to do some SACL uh, examples in, in the future, some more complex SACL uh, beyond bindings, maybe 
uh, merging multiple streams or something along those lines. I'd also like to see something on data flows, but it's kind of a head scratcher there. I, I wonder how you would necessarily, how could you surface that? Because the whole thing is, this is all uh, dashboard editing presented as a dashboard, and you can't really build a data flow that teaches you data flow editing because it's not visual. It's not the, it's not the same thing. So in summary, the Einstein Analytics Learning Adventure is much needed content to help to bridge the gap between Trailhead and advanced documentation. Um, really glad to see it around and can't wait to see what we're going to see in future revisions. Again, this is brand new, despite the fact that when you install it, it calls itself 3.0. Make sure to download this one. Even if you're a veteran, there's still going to be things that you will, uh, you will learn from this. If you enjoyed this, like subscribe, tell a friend. If you're going to be at Dreamforce 2017 next week, uh, please come check out the session where I will be joining Jeff Rothman from Salesforce along with Rachel Ng and Carl Brundage as we answer all of your questions live on stage. Um, should be fun. I mean, I plan on having fun. I hope the audience has fun too. Um, you know, but as always, thanks for watching.